more time. Oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. So, unfortunately, over the what last week or so, Octavian's life has come crashing down, like tumbling, blowing up in bits and pieces, right? And you know, it's he has no one to blame but himself. Unfortunately, no one to blame but himself. And it brings me nice onto his thing, right? Before I go on to Octavian's story, my position is that somehow, I don't know why it is, but from the stuff I've been looking at, from the outside looking in, again, I haven't been investigating these issues too closely, but from what I've observed and the news I've kind of been hearing, for some odd reason, I don't know why it is, but I get the feeling that black people in hip hop, whether it's the UK or the US, don't get cancelled. Regardless of what indiscretion that they do, they never get cancelled in the same way white celebrities do. I'm not too sure if it's kind of in the midst of this you know, uh, post George Floyd world, no one wants to piss off black people and stuff, whatever it may be. But there are some things that black people do that they can get away with that a white equivalent actor or white equivalent artist does. They will be completely cancelled and erased from society. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining, right? Because I am black myself. So if I went out there and did some absolute madness, right? Kick some old lady in the street or something, I would be more than happy to know that, whew. I'm not going to lose my record contract, right? That's what, that would be a good thing to know. Good to know. But somehow it can be very disturbing when that person kicks a old lady in the street and then goes and curb stomps her into the side of the street mercilessly until her brains are splattered all across the side of the drain. That obviously isn't great, right? Um, and it feels like for some reason, you hear these stories and there isn't any repercussion. I don't know why it is. It really makes no sense. So I was, I kind of had this thing that I always say that black people don't get cancelled. I just don't think it ever, ever, ever happens. Because the example that I use is that if, let's say, Skepta was Harry Styles and two of his friends went into prison, one for recording his girlfriend because she was ODing and one for support was it rape and uh imprisonment and stuff right more likely than not that would affect harry styles career it shouldn't because it's not his responsibility right skeptic it's not his fault his friends get up to madness behind his back right but just the association alone especially even more so with Skepta. He was shouting out Solo 4 or 5. You know, um, Sion was all over the place. And again, I know Sion, right? Like, I've known, I, I know him, right? I, I hang out with him back in the day. So my heart goes out to that kid. It's a bad situation to be in. But let's call a spade a spade, bruv. If Skepta was Harry Styles, his career would be finished. But for some reason, no one cares. Everyone moves on. People keep it trucking. Now, maybe because Skepta's a, a bit of a G in that regard. He doesn't move in a certain way. He doesn't necessarily talk to press too much. So it's pretty difficult to kind of get to him, I imagine, or talk about the stuff that he does, maybe because the people he's surrounded around himself with are a little bit clued up they sort of insulate him i don't know what the reason is but i just know there is definitely a difference in a reaction and consequences when it comes to how black artists and white artists are dealt with in pop culture whether it's kind of white guilt because of george floyd i don't know regardless support us but anyway um one person that might actually um kind of you know uh call into question my theory is octavian because it seems like he might be the first proper proper celebrity proper black artists or yeah black hip-hop artists to be cancelled you know immediately and it happened pretty quickly within like a couple of days right and, and again his crime is you know abhorrent that needs to be said put that little disclaimer right there so i don't look like an absolute psycho i'm advocating for flipping domestic violence but it's very interesting to, to note that that this is and i i get the feeling that if this would have happened post george floyd his career probably might have not devalued the um deteriorated the way it has done and i'm also thinking if this happened post covid it wouldn't deteriorate the way it does i always said i think i said in the beginning covid is the worst time to get cancelled because everyone's on their phone so pe and people's emotions are somewhat heightened right they can kind of people are um People are relating a lot more to people that not, that they don't share any sort of life experiences with. Just because you're on your phone, you're all kind of going through this so-called collective experience unless you're somewhere living in the hidden hills. I don't give a shit what you're doing because you're not going through this with the same with us. But for the most part, we're all going through this whole thing together, right? We're all kind of in this fun situation. So it feels like if you do get cancelled, this is the worst time because everyone is paying attention right and everyone's really scrutinizing the wrong that you've done and judging you a lot and this is what happened to octavian unfortunately and his career for the most part looks like it's completely over so headline reads as follows uk rapper octavian has been dropped by label of abuse allegations so it says here rapper octavian has been dropped by his label one day after no one day before his debut album was set to release after he was accused of abusive behavior by an ex-girlfriend absolutely mad epic um grand opening grand closing that one 
So it continues here. Over the past weekend, Octavian Goji, okay, that's actually a real name, didn't know that, was accused of physical abuse by a musician who goes by the name of Emo Baby, who dated the rapper for three years. On both Twitter and Instagram, she accused him of constant physical and verbal and psychological abuse, including hitting her with a hammer after pressuring her to get an abortion. When you hear that, right, first off the bat, you think, okay, you're out of here, innit? you're done. It's just over, isn't it? Like, you know, so, like if ever there was a time, if ever there was something that you shouldn't do, right, to get you cancelled, it'd be beating up a girlfriend that you've been with for three years, right, and then forcing her to get an abortion with a hammer. You're probably not going to get a second chance, isn't it? So when I saw that immediately, I was like, oh man, he's definitely going to, he's definitely going to scupper my idea that black people don't get cancelled because this is a cancellable offence if ever there was one. It continues. Shusha included videos and photos of the alleged abuse and claimed his label had tried to pay her with 20000 in exchange for an NDA suggesting that they were aware of the alleged violence. This is the most interesting part of it. Now, we know monsters exist. This is the thing that I have. My issue with this whole thing, even with the whole Harvey Weinstein, Weinstein issue, right? We know monsters exist. Monsters exist and unfortunately they're going to exist. They existed before Harvey and they exist after Harvey, right? So we can't avoid that, unfortunately. Some people are going to be at the behest of them or some people are going to be within their grips. We maybe have to educate people in terms of avoiding them, whatever it may be. But for the most part, if you're manipulative and clever enough, you can get around some of those things and end up abusing people. It's unfortunate, but that is the name of the game. The issue, I think, in general, isn't the actual monster. It's the support system around them that sort of allows it to happen and turns a blind eye. Those are the people that I have absolutely no sympathy or patience for. Like all those people that you saw featured on the Jeffrey Epstein seen documentary on netflix a couple of the women who hired other girls to go get abused i think there was one lady specifically who rejected how jeffrey epstein's advances right he tried to get with her she basically told him to f off but then he suggested hey why don't you get somebody else who's up for it and she suggested them so if you went through that terrible ordeal emotionally and physically distressing right waking up in sweats but then you are willingly putting other girls up for that you're a scumbag but those are the people that are essentially allowing monsters to get away with what they're doing that's the issue so that's a conversation no one wants to have, really, right? Why? Because Octavian, again, he's had a short career in music. He's not been around for that long. Maybe I'd say five years in, in kind of like everyone's with everyone's kind of consciousness, right? And um, Maybe before that, he was hustling underground. But for the most part, I've been aware of him maybe for about five years, right? If that's the case, and he is a monster, as, as this girl has proved, or this girl has basically laid out the evidence, which basically looks like he is a bit of a psychopath and a monster, I'm pretty sure within those five years, he's had evidence of doing it, of doing those things to other people, or he's shown kind of hints of the person that he is, because it's very rare that suddenly you wake up and you turn into a person that's going to force your girlfriend to get an abortion, threaten her with a hammer, beat her up, leave her with bruises and cuts and all this malarkey, cuss her out of her name. It's very unlikely that you are doing that. It's very unlikely that that's just a thing that happens overnight. There's definitely going to be a pattern of that prior. So for your label to go ahead and go and offer that girl for 20 grand to silence her is absolutely abhorrent and that's what everybody in the industry should be kind of screaming for the rafters why are we allowing these labels in the industry to do such a thing like why does this even exist why is this even a, a practice going on behind the scenes that's actually what people should be talking about because the monsters are always going to exist but let's eradicate the support system or people that, that turn a blind eye the people that are not brave enough to step out step out in front and say hey that's not cool because unless unless we do that to those people and call them accountable nothing's ever going to change because it's unlikely you're ever going to you know eradicate the world of flipping serial killers and sexual abusers and all these sort of flipping absolute monstrous people pedophiles and stuff it's, it's unlikely we're not going to do that well what we can do is eviscerate their support system so we don't breed as many of those people and so they don't kind of hide out in the open we can't allow those things to happen he continues the rapper's vehemently and denied the accusation saying that the while he did not date he was never abusive and would deal with the accusations legally which is i don't know how do you uh, that's what that, that's the other side of me so that's kind of just intrigued how do you honestly defend yourself when your ex-girlfriend brings up pictures videos texts that basically paint you out to be an absolute psychopath, right? How do you do that? Especially when it's somebody that you love. Because I never understood anyway. I never got the whole like beating of girls anyway in general. I don't ever agree with that. I think it's, you know, way... There is... I wouldn't say there's no excuse for it. But I just think when you love somebody, especially in a relationship, um, and you know the person, right? Come assuming a relationship. Um, and it's, it's getting to a point where you feel like you want to hit her. Maybe it's time to kind of call quits on the relationship before that gets to physical you know it escalates physically you don't need to get there you just need to kind of call it quits and maybe people's 
reluctance to call it quits and to kind of enjoy it. Because there is this weird fetishization within some cultures of toxic relationships and stuff. That might be a concern. But in general, I've never understood why some guys, especially hip hop artists or rappers, or whatever they may be, um, always resort to hitting the girl. I don't understand that. Usually the girls involved are like, people that have maybe kind of come up with you right so essentially she's been around when you were eating flipping noodles out of a cup or it's basically a, someone that's a fan of your music so regardless of the of where they of what point in life they met you that's a person that's completely adores you right from everything from from the soles of your feet to the crown of your head they adore you right so to somehow get to a point where you want to hit that person it just doesn't make sense to me Maybe you're hitting a random person, right? You, that you don't know. Again, hitting women, you shouldn't be doing anyway. But that might make some sense. It might be some event you're at, something happens and some physical, something physical and you feel like you need to defend yourself, whatever. But someone that you love? How does that even make any sense? For three years. And this guy honestly thinks he can defend himself. Like, again, who knows? He's innocent until proven guilty. You can't let the court, court of public opinion judge him, but unfortunately it has already. But if he can honestly defend himself, and again, I don't know what he's going to prove and put out there that's going to clear his name. What can you say? That she pulled a gun on you or a knife? Like, what can you honestly say that's going to justify? And even that, does that justify you telling her to get an abortion with a hammer? Like, what kind of, what kind of, what context can you add to that story, really? Um, I'll be interested to know. Anyway, it continues. In response, the rapper has been dropped by his record label, Black Butter, and his UK publicity team, Pattern Publicity. The label said in a short statement that they would not release his debut album, Alpha, due this week, which is mad, isn't it? You never see that happening, really. And there might be some legal... There might be some... Um, legal repercussions that they might suffer from Octavian's team if that's possible as well isn't it like just scrapping his entire release off the back of an accusation he hasn't been tried in court I know the girl put a, put through a police report but they might be in trouble with there but again it's impressive to see I've never actually seen this happen in real time in such quick succession um, it continues um, we at Black Butter have taken the decision not to continue working with Octavian and we will not be releasing the album which is ir ironic, ironic too if you believe what the girl said that they offered the 20 grand and now they're suddenly becoming the moral moral police like okay mate um, we don't condone the domestic abuse of any kind and we have suggested that Octavian seek professional help at his home while the statement does not directly address the accusations they were aware of the alleged abuse it implies they were not uh, they were not in her statement Ima Baby alleged that there's several album tracks detail violent fantasies about her uh da, 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 da. octavian was slated to perform across australia at the fomo this january but cancelled a month out due to the album recording commitments he has previously worked with the likes of skepta diplo muramasa asap flag future da, 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 many more anyway so let's let's read what she actually said about the issue right because that's the most um shocking and revealing part of this whole thing and if you just sort of like Man, the scumbags that exist in this industry, especially if you're kind of dealing with girls like that. Imagine how you're like, how are you treating women like this? It's just mad, isn't it? So this is one of the videos that she posted. Again, has some screams in the background. Under look, maybe it's just a, a FYI if you're a young guy out there. There should be no occasion in your life, in your dating life, um, you know, in you kind of running around town where any girl you're dealing with should ever sound like that. If you're if, if a girl you're dealing with is making those kind of noises, look yourself in the mirror and check yourself. You definitely need a wake up call. Like you should not be um doing anything that results in a woman screaming and pleading like that in that sort of like helpless, um, high pitched, painful voice. Like that shouldn't be happening under any circumstances. Record me and put me on the internet. And beat the shit out of me. Good friend you are. Beat the shit out of me. Are. And and is it me or can you hear a beat at the, at the bottom of this when he's talking? Beat the shit out of me. I'll beat the shit out of you because you're a fucking cunt. And you won't get my house. I'll beat the shit out of you. <laughs> Record me and put me on the internet. And beat the shit out of me. Bruv, who talks to that girl like this? This is what I'm. I'm it honestly boggles. First of all, isn't it? if you're a girl, like, how could... Again, relationships are so hard to talk about because it's so messy. It's so many things involved, in it? Like, family, it's just... Uh, but I don't understand how girls can give these guys the light of day. Like, how can you give guys like this this sort of attention and your presence and whatever it may be? It doesn't make any sense. Like, he's an absolute piece of shit, bro. Talking to you like that in, in general, in front of the dogs, in front of your babies. Like, how are you talking to you like that for? That's a madness.
It continues here, and then there's okay. There's a there's an image that she posted of a screenshot of the police report that she filed. Bloody hell, man! Let's what's the other piece of thing she put that? Oh, I don't I don't know. I really don't know. I really don't know what to say here. What's the other bit? Load this up here. I think it's a statement, isn't it? Right? Uh, but 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 it's a, it's a statement. Yeah. Um. Her statement says, I was in a relationship with Octavian over the last three years and I'm finally speaking out about the constant physical, verbal and psychological abuse I was subjected to during that relationship. A police report has been made, which is taking a little longer as I am in a different country for my own safety and well-being. So I guess off bat, if she's putting a police report through, then she has receipts, she has evidence and she really, really hates this guy. Like, like legitimately, this is the end. Enough is enough. Because usually, in these toxic relationships, from what I've read online and went in between the in between the lines, people just move on. Right? They don't want to be reminded of whatever they went through. They'd rather just compartmentalize it and continue on doing what they're doing, suffering in silence, whatever it may be doing, seeking help from psychologists. But they don't want to go through the rigmarole, filing a police report, giving evidence, going to court, blood, blood, blood. Just want to be rid of that person and move completely on, move to another country and continue. The fact that she's going to these lengths shows you just how bad the relationship got it continues here the first instance of physical abuse came shortly after i fell pregnant god damn it <sighs> with his child after pressuring me to get an abortion he attacked me for the first time kicked me in my stomach burst my lip attacked me with a hammer and threatened to kill me i was shortly later asked to sign an nda and attempt to gag me for twenty thousand pounds which i didn't sign so again, where are you going to get that NDA from? Octavia doesn't strike me as the most intelligent guy in the world. Judging by some of the screenshots that he's been providing in his defense, he doesn't really come across as the sharpest knife in the toolbox or the sharpest screwdriver in the toolbox, whatever that, that flipping <laughs> saying goes. So for sure, somebody helped him out get the MDMA, that, and that MDMA. So he definitely wasn't a bit of MDMA. But someone definitely helped him put together that NDA. And most likely it was definitely his, what, his label for the most part, right? So people need to ask some questions. Why are his record label trying to silence the, the, the girl in a domestic dispute? Something like this. Something, especially something so serious. They kind of aided and abetted him. Because monsters don't do these things alone. From what I've read, monsters are definitely helped. It continues. From the first instance of abuse from April 2020, when I finally left, the uh, no, from the first instance of abuse to April 2020, when I finally left, the abuse became routine and was often prompted by his cocaine use. <laughs> Why are we surprised? I said it recently to somebody. I remember mentioning to somebody that, oh, um, I was wondering, oh, what happened to Octavio then? He kind of fell off. I think after I've listened to a couple of singles or maybe the future one, that single didn't really go anywhere. He kind of wasted that future feature. And it kind of made me remember this one guy, I forgot who it was, someone on the podcast once said, if you ever if you ever kind of sat around thinking, oh, what happened to he or she in the entertainment industry, more likely than not that person either isn't working because they're a dickhead or they've succumbed to drugs and alcohol. Those are usually the two um, things that make you think, oh, what's happened to so-and-so? Because most of the time, most people in the entertainment industry, artists, wherever they are, they want to be up around. They want to be up in the action, right? They want to be quote unquote relevant. No one wants to just disappear for the most part, five, six years and just not make any music. No one, you know, the Frank Oceans and Playboy Carriers in the world, they're sort of the rarities. Most people like being in front of the camera. They like their name ringing out. They want to be given an interview, blah, 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 blah. So if somebody isn't being featured on new songs, isn't being around, isn't in the mix, it's usually because they're a dickhead behind the scenes and no one wants to give them opportunity or they succumb to drugs and alcohol. Bingo. It continues here. I was frequently kicked, punched and strangled, dragged out of the house with my clothing or hair and he would smash furniture and threaten me with a bat or attack me with other items like a screwdriver. What a good time, eh? What a good time. God almighty. The reason I decided to share my story with Octavian now before his album is I don't want anyone to look up to him, especially not young girls, and listen to the dark music he makes to celebrate his abuse. He has an entire song about the violently killing me with a machete called My Head. <laughs> Sorry. Which in a since deleted interview with DJ Semtex, Octavian admits to a song being about me and proudly calls it art. He also has a new song on the album named Rock Smiles, which is about two men attacking me at the end of the song. He says that he wants to kill me for telling everyone that he has a don't that what for what he has done. I felt I had to share all this and speak my truth before these songs were out. So if ever you're wondering, oh, this girl's clout chasing, why is she putting out her album? She's telling you clearly she hates this guy so much that she wants to damage his ability to put out an album and also remind his fans that he's not who he says he is. 
if that isn't unequivocal proof that this guy is a piece of shit, I don't know what is. And again, I'm one of the people that likes to, you know, I don't like people getting judged in a court of public opinion. But sometimes you got to call a spade a spade, man. This guy sounds like a prick. You know what I mean? Um, it continues here. Um, this is just a fraction of what I have experienced and what I have to say. You can read my whole account of my experience in my highlights. And pictures here of bruises on her. Like, again, FYI to the young boys out there, to the young Gs, the young gunners, your girl should never have these these bruises on her. Not, never. Never these cuts and bruises. They, and under any circumstances. It just shouldn't happen. God almighty, these young boys are moving mad, innit? There's a clip of him saying what? You like my head? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's different. Isn't it? What was going on that led to you to make that? I was breaking up with my girl. My girl was in the studio. And I remember sitting in the studio and I was like fucking writing these lyrics. <laughs> it was just like, so every single song on that track is about like a moment. Yeah, so what you said, so this is the lyrics. Been thinking about killing you, baby you fucking bitch. Grab the gun on my right, push the good thoughts to the sideway. Bitch, you can't talk to me. I ain't got time. Too busy cutting lines. <laughs> Mate, this guy does sniffs a couple of lines and starts beating up his girlfriend. What an absolute piece of shit. Um, usually when you do that, you're meant to be celebrating, right? And getting on with your girl, having a good time, playing some music, dancing in the living room. You should be elbowing her in her face, bruv. What are you doing? Um, anyway, continues. Bitch, you can't kill me. No, bitch, you can't talk to me. I ain't got time. Too busy cutting lines. I'll kill you if you're in sight. Yeah. Give me some molly or I'll start a riot. I'm moving kind now saying, can you be mine? Grab the machete and then I put it to your belly. Like, ay, 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 ay. So yeah, man, Octavian is done for the most part, it looks like. And I don't know what to say, man. Like, it sounds like it's well-deserved because um, he sounds like a piece of shit. But obviously, you never know, innit? He might have some evidence that might absolutely corroborate his story that this is being pulled out of, you know, um, we're only seeing one side of the story, more evidence to come, my support as well as some malarkey. But it's definitely, this definitely puts into question my theory that black people can't be cancelled. Octavian sounds like he's cancelled. Album completely been scrapped for the most part it looks like from his record label agency has completely abandoned him the only person i think is in his corner still of his manager it looks like from the looks of it but yeah let me know your thoughts man what do you think do you think do you believe his girlfriend's account of the story do you think that tyvin should be given his time in court to defend himself in the proper way through the proper channels do you think people are going overboard um, do you think there needs to be more scrutiny placed upon the record labels for uh, kind of facilitating and housing an artist like this, knowing full well what he's doing behind closed doors? Do the women in his life have some responsibility, knowing how much of an abuse he was over a long period of time? I need to speak up now. Whatever you may say, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to know your thoughts and opinion regarding the issue. Let me know in the comments down below.